Hello, I'm Locke Mayor. I'd just like to invite you to join me on the next Legal Lines, where my guest is Mayor President Sharon Broom. The mayor's going to talk to us about the appointment or choice of her new chief administrative officer, about the search for the police chief, and also about steps she's taken to reduce crimes. There's four big steps. A lot of millions of dollars about to be poured in to reduce our high crime rate. So join us on the next Legal Lines with Mayor President Sharon Broom. It's time now for Legal Lines Tips with your host, Locke Meredith. Hello, I'm Locke Meredith, and I have a Legal Lines tip for you. Remember, knowledge is power. And I want you to know if you're injured, Louisiana law grants you a variety of claims to make sure you're fully compensated. It's generally chopped up into several categories, the first being general damages. That's going to compensate you for your mental and physical pain and suffering, your scarring, disability, functional limitations, your loss of enjoyment of life. Also, it will compensate your family, frankly, for your loss of affection. It's called loss of consortium claim. Next category is specific damages. Those would be, say, for example, past and future lost wages, past and future medical expenses. You also have a claim sometimes for what's called punishment damages or punitive damages, typically only available when you're injured by a drunk party. Finally, you're entitled to legal interest from the date you file your lawsuit until you're paid and court costs. So my legal lines tip to you from me, Locke Meredith. Make sure you know what your claims are. This has been Legal Lines Tips with your host, Locke Meredith. Hello, welcome to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith, and I'm very pleased to have back on the show our mayor president of East Baton Rouge Parish in the city of Baton Rouge, Sharon Brew. Sharon, so it's good to be here with to have you. you back. Yeah. Let's dive in because uh, you you have been in office now for ten months or so. Yes, yes. And January. I understand this morning you made a big announcement. Uh, tell tell the folks about that. Well, um, we announced my new CAO, my permanent CAO. Which means for those the who are chief, government. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. It's the chief administrative officer. Kind of like your right hand person. Right hand person, the person who uh, manages our day to day operations, who administrates. Uh, but who is very instrumental in executing the vision, uh, the goals that I have established for the city and parish. And so uh, Daryl Gizzle, uh, who happened to have been a candidate for mayor as well, is... So let's say that again. Yes. This was an opponent of yours. Yes. And who I, you beat. Yes. And, and you've I now made the, him part of your team. Yeah. and That's he, great. It is. And I think, um, I believe our relationship, you know, over the past months, since I won, uh, Daryl has uh, offered his service in terms of assisting uh, to help us with any initiatives we're working on, to give feedback and uh, of his day-to-day -day interactions in the community, and has been an encourager. You know, like sometimes during someone told me when you start out. Um, you often have a big high, you know. The inauguration, oh, it was so exciting. We were, everybody was on a high. And then you finish strong, right? So you but, hit the hangover part. <laughs> but in the middle, but in the middle, when you're getting to finish strong, there's oftentimes some missteps, some bumps in the road, et cetera. We all have them. And we all have them. That's how and, you learn. It, exactly. And so I believe that we are turning from that now and getting to, uh, a season where we can certainly see continued uh, uh, progress for our city and our parish. And I will say this, I have to say this, Locke, that over the months, uh, Dr. Jim Lorenz uh, served as he the was your interim. interim. Right. He was the interim CAO, very uh, wise man, insightful, uh, intelligent, uh, worked in city parish government before, uh, a strong confidant, somebody who really helped uh, me implement my agenda over the past month. So I'm certainly uh, extremely grateful for him, uh, but also glad to bring closure to a permanent CAO uh, in the person of Daryl Gizzle. And Daryl brings a lot to the table. He, he, in addition to running for mayor, we, we both share the same passion to uh, unite our city, to improve uh, our city as it relates to uh, business growth and development, uh, equity in business, uh, opening up business so, uh, in city parish government. So um, others will, everyone who may have not had access can know how they can uh, do that and, and encouraging small business development, working uh, specifically on our flood recovery efforts and uh, certainly a big public, job. Pub public safety. Someone asked me, uh, uh, what does the CAO uh, do or what is he going to be doing specifically? Well, he will certainly specifically be working on 
uh, all of the issues that I committed to as mayor president in my inauguration and what our transition team, many of the recommendations that our 300 member transition team came up with to uh, enhance and elevate our, our city and in our parish. Um, my mantra and my goal for our city and parish that I will consistently say is that Baton Rouge is going to be a community of peace, prosperity, and progress. And, and I sincerely believe that. And it's going to take all of us working together. What I love, Mayor, mm -hmm. is that um, his background is as a Republican part of the, the directorship of the mm -hmm. Republican Party for the state. And you've been a Democrat your mm -hmm. whole life. Yes. And, and it's basically the two parties coming together, or mm -hmm. two sides that may mm -hmm. differ somewhat philosophically yeah. one way or the other and minutia. But the big picture is the same. Yeah, there undoubtedly are some uh, stark contrasts in our backgrounds, uh, even politically. Uh, when Daryl ran, he ran as an independent. Uh, but I think that's what unites us and makes us stronger. I believe that working Not together, great. we will be a model of uh, what can take place throughout this city and parish. Uh, like, you know, we, we have challenges. Uh, I inherited uh, a great deal of um, situations and circumstances that didn't stop in 2016. Uh, yeah, let's talk. I mean, yeah. I call them the storms. Mm -hmm. Literally, yeah. this past two weeks, you had a hurricane mm -hmm. coming at you. Prior to that, you had a one in a thousand year flood Correct. that hit, oh, what, 120, 130,000 houses and businesses. Yes. Yeah. And then prior to that, the, the Alton Sterling killing yeah. and the murders of our law enforcement yes. officers and the horrible woundings mm -hmm. and just this just turmoil yeah. in Baton Rouge in our city that frankly, I've never, born and raised here and I've never seen the, yeah. everything that we've been through. So, so these incidents that you just named didn't stop in 2016. No. Uh, we are still a community uh, that is in the midst of healing, that is in the midst of recovery. That is what we're still uh, in the midst of. I remain very faith-filled and optimistic that we will recover and that we will move forward from all of those different incidents that had a very profound impact on this city and, and on this parish. And uh, I, I look forward to not only my team being a part of changing that dynamic and, and enhancing our community, but I think it's very vitally important that the citizens of our community are part of the process of helping be. us being engaged and helping us to, to move forward. Um, there, there are a lot of people who often uh, talk about what's not going right, you know, the negatives. And the we, half glass, half full the, perspective. Yeah, exactly. And I certainly get that. I, I'm, I certainly, I'm certainly not in denial about the challenges that we face, but I'm looking for people who see the challenges, but want to add to the solutions in terms of how we move from point A to point B to becoming a city where disinvested communities are, are now strengthened and where public safety is not the exception, but becomes the norm in communities where, where uh, small businesses in, in our community feel like they can thrive and prosper and where everyone feels like this is a good place for me to call my home. I love Baton Rouge and, and I want to be a part of it. And so that's, that's where we, we're, we're striving. That's what we're striving well, I, for. I think what you said is so mm -hmm. valuable because I, everything I've read about true, genuine, authentic, but functional and, and successful leadership is spend 10% of your time, maybe 20% identifying the problems. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the time, the other 90 or 80%, find the solutions, implement and adjust. And that's, that's where y'all mm -hmm. are right now is finding the solutions and trying to implement and, and adjust accordingly based on the info. Let's kind of shift gears real fast. We've got a lot of big issues facing the city as, as we're discussing. A flood, huge, big issue. I know you personally flooded. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. Yes. Uh, no insurance, right? Right. No insurance. Uh, we, I live in uh, the Park Forest area, and uh, that was not a flood zone. And so... Um, many of my neighbors did not have flood insurance, and so uh, certainly flood recovery remains a very important All right, we'll continue topic. this on the next segment. This is Locke Meredith with Legal Lines. My special guest, Mayor Sharon Broom, will be right back. 
It's time now for Legal Lines Tips with your host, Locke Meredith. Hello, I'm Locke Meredith with a Legal Lines Tip for you. Document your claim. What do I mean? Whenever you present a claim, whether it's for injuries in an automobile collision or for a breach of contract case or a business claim, it all boils down to documentation and evidence. For example, when you go to trial, basically both sides are presenting their evidence of what they believe to be their case. For example, also, if you're involved in an automobile collision, document the event. Talk to all the parties who are involved. Get their names, address, contact information, insurance info. Talk to the witnesses on the scene. Also get their contact information. Take photographs with the phones we all have these days. Everybody can take a picture and that paints a thousand words. So document your claim. The Legal Lines tip from me, Locke Meredith, to you is document the claim. This has been Legal Lines Tips. Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith again. Very pleased to have back on the show our Mayor President for the City of Baton Rouge and East Baton Rouge Parish, Sharon Broom. Sharon, thanks again. Let's dive back in. We're talking about one of the big issues being the flood. Um, let's talk about the money. I think the feds have sent us about or dedicated $1.3 mm -hmm. That spigot just kind of opened in the last month or two, I think Congressman Garrett Graves had told me. And, um, and I know the city has gotten some funds. Tell the folks how we're doing. So um, we will receive $104 million approximately in hazard mitigation money. And uh, most of that money will be uh, dedicated to drainage efforts. Um, in that money, we also uh, have to collaborate with our uh, other municipalities within East Baton Rouge Parish, Zachary, uh, Central, and Baker. Okay. Early on, we received about $11 million in a grant from FEMA, and we used that uh, money. We tried to leverage it to help those individuals who have rental property get back up in commerce. And we called our program Rebuild Louisiana. And the um, reason, let's point mm -hmm, out the reason mm -hmm. y'all focusing on that yeah. is to create housing for folks who didn't have a house. Exactly. And, and it's very important, Locke, that we didn't want to duplicate other efforts that were going on. For example, you know the state has the Restore Louisiana right. program, which is more directed toward individual homeowners. And so uh, we wanted to add a complement to what was going on. But it still is an ongoing uh, process. I will tell you that we have uh, executed an RFP uh, around stormwater drainage. And so our goal is to have a stormwater drainage plan that will help us as we roll out in the future um, a projects to improve drainage issues in our city and parish. And we also have to, I also have to say this, uh, Locke, and that is that when we talk about flood issues, when we talk about drainage issues, we have to talk from a regional perspective. Mm -hmm. Why? Because water just doesn't stay in one place. That's right. and, and it I've doesn't had, come from just one place. That's either. right, exactly. And I've had a number of conversations with our parish presidents from surrounding er areas, such as uh, Iberville and Ascension and West Baton Rouge Parish. And so all of us um, will be discussing how we work together to maximize and leverage our uh, dollars to, to deal with uh, drainage. Well, mm -hmm. and, and I know that the Metro Council, I think this week, um, voted down Councilman uh, Buddy Amoroso's proposed moratorium on building in, in these, I guess, the special flood mm -hmm. uh, hazard areas. And the council said, uh, we're not going to do that right now, but that's being studied mm -hmm. to make sure it's done, what, a little yeah. more with more concern about the potential flooding effects on surrounding properties? I, I believe that was their uh, motivation. Uh, there were many concerns uh, surrounding the uh, UCD code, making sure that um, the efforts to revise those took place, and also the fact that we, we do have a stormwater drainage plan that we are working on. So um, I believe in the upcoming uh, council meetings, you will see the council members come together around another initiative, uh, which they feel will certainly address some of the concerns surrounding. Okay, well, let's shift gears again. Uh, crime is a big issue uh, for our city. It's been a big issue in the past, mm -hmm. and it's currently a big issue now. I remember in 2012, we had a, almost a historical high. I remember mm -hmm. uh, having a billboard that said it was greater than the crime mm -hmm. rate of Chicago at mm -hmm. that time. And I think we were at 83 murders, and I mm -hmm. think we've surpassed that, sadly, this year. 
So tell me what we're doing about it. So violent crime has undoubtedly been a big issue uh, in our community. There are a lot of people, Locke, who have asked me, why is this taking place? And there are a lot of different uh, reasons or answers that are being provided. Uh, one answer uh, that I've heard has come from sociologists who say that the, the flood from last year has an impact on that. Interesting. Another, of course, it was going pretty bad before yeah, that, but yeah. you know. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> and then another uh, reason which I have gotten from law enforcement has to do with, with uh, drugs in our community. Uh, uh, and, and, no and, doubt about it. And so I have said that we have to address public safety with at least two different pillars. And those pillars are law enforcement, but the other pillar would be uh, proactive and preventative uh, programs that need to be implemented. Which require community involvement. Exactly. If we exactly. don't have the community participating, yes. this isn't going to work. Exactly. And so for uh, law enforcement point of view, one of the things that we've done in my plan, which is a living and breathing plan for crime reduction, uh, is to uh, have more officers out on the street. Got to have them. I've, I've, I've had that conversation with uh, Interim Chief Dunham, and I've directed him to do that. He's doing that. And we, you have an academy. We just established a post-certified academy, Excellent. which will bring us a few more officers. Uh, I will tell you, next year, I have already approved uh, that our two academies will have uh, more cadets than originally uh, established. We will move from 20 cadets to 35 cadets in two academies. Uh, in addition to that, blight is often connected to criminal mm -hmm. activity. And so uh, with my work with our um, law enforcement officials, BRPD, we've identified uh, areas in blighted property that have been connected to potential crime or crime. And so I've directed DPW to um, demolish those properties. And so we are aggressively uh, dealing with blight as well. In addition, we're improving lighting in areas throughout our city uh, and, and our parish. Maybe and a little harder to do the crime. That's right. And we're working to get additional crime cameras throughout the city. We have approximately 70 now. Our goal is to increase that by uh, 25. So those are that's some of the law enforcement um, initiatives that are taking place. And Mayor, I will tell mm -hmm. you, and I think we were talking before yeah. the show, that you know I've done a lot of interviews with law enforcement over the years, and particularly with folks dealing with uh, East Baton Rouge Parish um, during the previous administrations. And they all had a consensus that, number one, the, they needed more boots on the ground. They needed a lot more boots mm -hmm. on the ground, which, of course, requires more money, which either requires more taxes yeah. or cutting somewhere. And, and that they also, they brought up the misdemeanor jail. What is your position on that? I, I saw that Mr. Gissel, mm -hmm. you know, kind of favored it. And their, their whole thought was, we got this out there. We got to show you have to have responsibility mm -hmm. for if you break the law. Do you have yeah, a position? I, I, and I, I certainly believe in accountability and responsibility. Um, my focus recently, most recently, has been on the implementation of the law enforcement aspect and my focus more than on the misdemeanor jail right. is to provide uh, opportunities for our young people ages 14 through 24 so we can change the trajectory of individuals. I'm aggressively working on a apprenticeship program because uh, certainly when people have jobs that helps them uh, become successful in life as well and so training you, we talked about education yep. earlier. That's a vital uh, component it's also. It's impossible to succeed and yeah. even survive in this society without an education. Yeah. And so all of those fall into the proactive, preventative sphere that I've been working on in all addition right. to law enforcement. Well, we'll continue this on the next segment. Okay. This is Locke Maid with Legal Alliance, my special guest, the mayor of East Baton Rouge Parish in the city, Sharon Broom. Be right back. It's time now for Legal Lines Tips with your host, Locke Meredith. Hello, I'm Locke Meredith with a Legal Lines tip for you. Document your claim. What do I mean? Whenever you present a claim, whether it's for injuries in an automobile collision or for a breach of contract case or a business claim, it all boils down to documentation and evidence. For example, when you go to trial, basically both sides are presenting their evidence of what they believe to be their case. 
For example, also, if you're involved in an automobile collision, document the event. Talk to all the parties who are involved. Get their names, address, contact information, insurance info. Talk to the witnesses on the scene. Also get their contact information. Take photographs with the phones we all have these days. Everybody can take a picture and that paints a thousand words. So document your claim. The Legal Lines tip from me, Lock Meredith, to you is document the claim. This has been Legal Lines Tips. Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Lock Meredith. Again, pleased to have back on the show Sharon Broom. She is our mayor of East Baton Rouge Parish and the city. Sharon, let's dive back in. We were talking about crime and how one of the focuses uh, in the past has been the program called Brave. Mm -hmm. I've been reading that uh, the feds are coming in with almost every agency there is. Uh, the U.S. Attorney with the FBI, and DEQ, all the Homeland Security, all those guys joining forces with the state police and our local police mm -hmm. and law enforcement officers. Tell us about that. Well, um, this initiative has been started from the Department of Justice, and as I understand, it has been utilized in the past, so it's uh, not new. The Strike Force Unit, I believe, is what they're called. Right. Um, I've had communication um, with our U.S. Attorney's Office, and uh, they have said that their goal is to just reinforce and n not to, contrary to what many people believe, uh, go after the um, average um, citizen or criminal who may be doing misdemeanor efforts right. or something, but the violent criminals who uh, and the drug pushers. Are, are disrupting our community. And they've the also, because this is always a, a concern that you, and a legitimate concern, because of our incarceration rate here in Louisiana, that their their motive is not to uh, put everybody in jail. Their their motive is to go after those individuals who are chronically committing these violent crimes right. on our street. And so they're offering that support uh, to the law enforcement component. And um, we in the Baton Rouge Police Department, I should say, um, already has our, our, we have our street crimes unit. And these individuals are engaged in the community, uh, but they are boots on the ground dealing with um, uh, criminal activity, but also building relationships with individuals in the community as they uh, work to reduce crime. Uh, and, it, and it's going to take a collaborative effort. Yep. Um, one of the things I've been trying to do, Locke, is to, is to improve the and, and close the gap between law enforcement and our citizens in our community. We have to work on building trust. And right. that's- You're that's exactly a, right, Mayor. That's an evolvement. It's evolving because there have been some, some challenges. Sure. Um, but I believe that once we do that, we will see uh, changes take place in our neighborhoods and in our communities once that trust is built. Well, and I know this week also mm -hmm. that you had your, your call to action meeting. Yes. Tell the folks about that. So I implemented a call to action meetings this week. We had four call to action meetings uh, simultaneously throughout the city. And my goal in having those events, um, it was not to just have another meeting, because Lord knows we, <laughs> we, we have enough meetings right. to go to. We're never short of meetings. But I wanted the community to become stakeholders in our efforts to reduce crime in our neighborhoods. And in order to do that, you heard me talk early, earlier a lot that I have a living, uh, moving document in terms of our crime reduction. Which means it can be flexible. That's right, but I need their input in right. it. Right. I need their input into it because uh, many of the, most citizens are close to knowing what is going on in their neighborhood. They have to be our eyes and ears exactly. for law enforcement to make any significant changes. Correct. And so they offered suggestions, they offered recommendations, and we're going to integrate their input into our document. We're going to put that up on our city parish uh, website and uh, continue to uh, keep those lines of communication open and revisit where we are with our outcomes. And so um, the citizen engagement is a vital part of reducing crime Absolutely. and public safety in our community. Let's shift gears again. Education. Uh, we've talked about it. The number one thing you can do, we've even talked about it in the show, mm -hmm. to help a child succeed and survive in this world is an education. T tell me what you're doing in that regard. Well, you know, when I um, 
in my inauguration uh, speech, I said, well, I certainly can't be the superintendent, I, and, but I support the superintendent wholeheartedly. And he's done a great and job. And he's done Warren a great Drake. job. But I can be the advocate in chief for quality education in our community. And so one of the initiatives that we've started in the city parish government is our Cradle to K program. Now, what is that? Laka, I'm sure you've heard about the importance of early childhood development. So as you know, in city parish government, we have the Head Start program. Right. And we also have a pre-K program where our goal is to build another component where uh, uh, when children are first born to empower parents with information to make sure that they start their child on a path of success. We can't wait till children are in kindergarten. We can't wait till they're in the fourth grade or the eighth grade to think we're going to change uh, the, the dynamics right. of their life. We have to start early and, and most, uh, um, you, you know, our medical professionals, our sociologists, all have identified early childhood development as a key component of changing the trajectory of someone's life. So how would you do that? And so one of where we have started, uh, we've started with a social media site. And so we are having parents who are not only sharing their concerns and challenges that they have in parenting, but we're having other individuals uh, from uh, professional background as well as uh, uh, parents share their uh, experiences and uh, solutions and their solutions uh, to, uh, for example, from uh, dealing with when you first bring a child home, because <laughs> pretty it, trying time. Yeah, because they're two you know, sons with two brand new granddaughters. And, and and you know the saying, there's nothing new under the sun, and so uh, many people have some wise input to offer. But we also have a professional uh, staff and team working to roll out different phases of our cradle to case. So also, right now we're in phase one. Okay, I also saw that you are you have arranged, and I think intend to continue, joint meetings between the school board and, and the superintendent and the Metro Council. Well, we certainly, we had our first meeting, and this has never taken place to my knowledge as, in our research. I think it's a great Where idea. we had a meeting with the school board and uh, the Metro Council. And we talked about education and what were the priorities or what are the priorities. And certainly early, early childhood development was one of the priorities. And so I also have convened my mayor's education advisory council. And uh, we have two leaders from the Metro Council, Councilwoman uh, Barbara Feiberg and Councilman Lamont Cole, who are offering leadership on the Educational Advisory That's Council. excellent. Let's shift gears again. Mm -hmm. Quickly, the infrastructure, because we only have a couple of minutes. I know that you had considered putting forth a, a, a tax proposal. Mm -hmm. that, that isn't moving forward at this point. What do you intend to do? Well, I'm not going to let our city, our infrastructure crumble. Uh, uh, transportation and mobility still remains a top priority for these, the citizens of our community. So we will be coming back after we uh, collaborate with the citizens of this community and other stakeholders uh, with a plan to address transportation and roads. That's great. Mm -hmm. Finally, the racial division that's kind of occurred, um, how's that gonna, how are we going to heal this? Well, I've always said we have to start first with love God, love your neighbor with no exception. Uh, we also have to remember that communities rise and fall together, and that means we have to work on uh, the communities that have been disinvested in to bring us all up. Mayor, thank you so much. It's been wonderful thank to have you. you back on the show. This is Lock Mayor with Legal Lines. Mayor Sharon Broom, thank you for being with us.